On one of the other videos, I was talking about uh, return air boxes are very seldom ever the same. The circumstance, again, dictates what it is that you've got to do. If you take a look at this, this is going to be my return air plenum right here. This is going to attach on top, onto the back of the horizontal furnace up in the attic. This is going to extend down through the rafters, and then this is going to remain just about flush with the drywall. There will be an opening in the bottom. We will cut a physical opening in the bottom of this enclosed box and the return air filter grill will insert through the drywall, through the hole, and attach from the inside on this portion of the duct. So this is an entirely different type of return air plenum than what we've talked about before. Now unfortunately I misplaced the, the layout footage so you're going to have to bear with me just describing it for now. Dimensions to, uh, to the metal. Go ahead and notch them like standard for your quarter inch for your flange here, your half inch double hem flange, four inch throat with the one inch flange or the, the half inch flange which totals one inch. Four inch throat, nine and three eighths inch down to penetrate the drywall. And then this dimension here will allow the, I think this is 18 inches because we're gonna put a 16 inch return air drill in from the bottom. And then of course the uh, the total height will be the 17 and five eighths plus the nine and three eighths. That brings us back up and into the uh, back of the furnace. You'll see the return air filter grill here, drawn right up through here and right straight into the back of the air handler. This is going to be a one-piece wrapper all the way around the perimeter. So this is actually upside down. This is the actual bottom that's going to go down there. So let me turn it over. That makes a little more sense. This is the horizontal furnace hanging up in the attic. It's going to attach on this. This is going to be the entire wrapper. We'll cut the bottom out for the return air grill to come up through the ceiling. When that's the case, we have to make one-piece wrapper all the way around this edge. So we add the one inch, the width here, 22 inch, got 27 inches in height, 17 and 7 8 inch in width, 9 and a quarter inches in height, 4 inch throat, 1 inch flange. Add all that together and we come up with 82 and an eighth by the width, which is 21 plus the 2 inch for the two Pittsburghs, so that's 23. So cut size is going to be 82 and 1 8 by 23 for that wrapper. So I took the liberty of laying out the one piece wrapper. I've got it cut to length. Remember the 82, uh, I think it was 82 and an eighth or something like that in total length. Then I laid out the first section. Here's your, your five inch right here. And then the next is nine and three quarter or nine and a quarter inch. Then the next is 17 and five eighths. The next is uh, 27 uh, and then 17 and seven eighths. And then the final uh, little bit as you go around the corner. And what we're gonna do is we're going to notch those directly on that those marks because those marks are going to become the fold line whenever you go into the break. We'll just go ahead and make the notches, the appropriate notches. Now you see the notches all the way up on both sides. I'm going to cross break the appropriate sections, then we're going to go for the lock farmer. Remember, we like to cross break first uh, so that we don't smash the pick bird locks shut whenever we cross break in the break.
reiterate from the start, this is the opening that's going to be attached to the back of the, the air handler in the attic. I've got one flange so it can be screwed onto the back side, then the other three will slip over the outside edges because it's a non-flange bottom of the, uh, of the furnace. But at any rate, that's going to be the return air going that direction. This is a sealed compartment right now. This area, right, this area right here will be flush with the bottom of the drywall and when we cut the drywall we'll cut the uh, hole out and the return air filter grill will insert right up through the drywall and into this. And then of course this is the return chamber going that direction. Again, this is just another variation of, um, of a return air, a, a style of a return air box. Uh, like I said, the circumstances dictate the necessity of, of how you fabricate something or how you lay something out or, or whatever. Now this will be fully sealed and it will be fully insulated with double mylar bubble wrap all the way around on the outside and then it's going to be completely covered with batting. I think this particular one is going to be covered with bad insulation on top of that. So, uh, now I've managed to either delete some of the footage or or record over some of the footage, but in several places throughout this particular series of videos, I managed to uh, lose a little bit of the, the layout. So this here, I'm just explaining um, what I did, you know, during the layout procedure. This, this happened to be just a couple of sections of flat duct. It's already laid out to dimensions, and I'm getting ready to, uh, to notch it right now. So that's what we'll pick up here in just a second. All you need right now is your little scribe, and you can mark your quarters, Mark your quarters. You can mark your uh, your ones. Come down here. Mark your ones the rest of the way. Mark your Pittsburghs. Just like that. Now all you have to do is make one measurement, and that measurement is going to be that ten and three quarter inches off of this right here. So just add that one to it, and go eleven and three quarter from the outside edge where the lock farmer is going to go. And that's the only actual dimension you have to measure whenever you're laying out this particular duct. So now we just go ahead and notch. Now it's on to bend the drive tabs on. Now you can bend the drive tabs when they're still duct tabs or after the duct is completely assembled. I prefer to do them when the duct is completely assembled, but you can tell by the confines in my shop I'm a little bit crowded for space. I'm going to do these in duct tabs, but I much prefer doing them as assembled pieces of duct.
one more thing to do, and that's to, uh, to make a, uh, an end cap for the supply trunk. Uh, if you want to see that, I think I'll do that real quick. Uh, but other than that, we, we're pretty much got this little project fabricated. Now, if you want to make an end cap, you take the dimension of your duct. This particular one's 10 and 3 quarter by 12. Add 2 all the way around, so it's going to be 12 and 3 quarter by 14. So I got this cut here. There's 12 and 3 quarter. There's 14. Take your homemade handy scribe, and you go on drive in. You can go ahead and mark that so you know which one it is. And then the SN just gets a straight drive in. You don't have to put that second mark on there, but I like to. Then you come right here, come right across. Take just a little bit of that center out of there. Not much, just a little bit. That way if you're using a brake to fold it, whenever it folds up the 90s, it won't interfere. Now I'm going to take this over to the cleat bender and fold the drive tabs. Then we'll come back to the 8-foot brake and make the rest of it. Ten seconds over at the cleat bender. we got drive cleats on the uh, long dimension on this particular one because this, this duct is the long way vertical instead of long way horizontal. Uh, here at this little break, not because we need it, but because it's convenient. I'm just going to slide this right in here. We're going to come up to that right there. We'll roll this up a 90 degree. Slide that out of here. Roll that up to 90 degree as well. This is where those angles come in handy now come into this one inch mark right here, right there. See, you can fold it up to 90, and because of that angle, it doesn't interfere and doesn't crinkle this up here. Save yourself a little bit of time straightening something out before you assemble it. There you go. Except for filming with the camera, this is literally 60 seconds to make an end cap. Another, uh, another quick and simple little job put to rest. Just got to run by over my buddy's garage and throw it up in the attic, you know, and stick it together a little bit. It's not going to be that big a deal. I'll be home by noon. That's, that's a good thing. But at any rate, you know what? We beat this one to death. Literally, catch a drift of that electric hammer. We have beat this one to death. Uh, this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.